Okay, let's put it very simply. Ian, do you think the gods or <laughs> disincarnate entities have will? Yeah, I think that's how this is it. <laughs> okay. Well, you can make it simple, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make it complicated before I get back to the simple. So go um, ahead, go ahead. Um, so I do want to address parts of your question because I think uh, they're very important. Um, uh, not in just identifying some specific meaning in conversation, but in uh, for anyone that might listen to this on a path of. Uh, becoming an adept in whatever way, um, that distinguishing very clearly that which you know from direct experience and that which you receive on faith, which is an important part, like you need to be able to receive uh, potential models of reality and um, uh, understandings from people who have traveled the path before. You need to be open to that. But you also need to know very clearly what is your direct experience and how does it meet that. Um, and so I just didn't want to let that disappear because I think that's uh, that's like the fundamental through line to the path of a spiritual adept. Um, and uh, okay, so um, so then the other thing we need to parse a little bit uh, in order to answer the question clearly and simply um, is uh, what is free will and where can we, in what context can we talk about it um, sensibly? Um, and the way that I've come to, to navigate this and, and model it for my own day-to-day -day, uh, experience and for my students um, is to uh, propose that we develop the ability to uh, simultaneously understand things at uh, different levels. I think of them as valences um, in which, you know, the, the center is is uh, ultimate reality, um, unity, totality, uh, that which are without distinction. Can, you, can you just is, repeat that word? So, I'm sorry, if, uh, valence? Valence? valence I just like, want... Valences are uh, from uh, the chemical model of an atom. The electrons okay. orbit an atom at cool. different distances from the atom. Okay. And so they have a, uh, you could say orbits, you could, you could say like the different planets with respect to the sun. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't want to, I want to make sure that I, I, I get what you, you're saying. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so we want to be able to understand our experience multivalently. Yeah. Uh, so the word equivalent is, you know, equal valence, and the word multivalent is. Uh, mm. uh, so we're we're understanding things on two different levels at the same time. Um, and on the one level, like, you know, I I choose to walk up the mountain today, or I choose not to, or I choose what I'm going to have for breakfast. Uh, it feels like choice, and. Uh, there may be some utility to unwinding that illusion because it is an illusion, but uh, there's also some dysfunctionality in the day-to-day -to, -day to um, demand of yourself that you recognize in every moment. Uh, there's no free will. There's no choice. There's no agency. But from the, the level of... Um, the absolute, the level in which, um, you know, out of the absolute, uh, the experienced world is born and returns, um, there is only pattern and pattern that affects pattern and, 
and uh, there's no uh, isolation even, you know, individuals, different objects, you know, they're, they're really just fields of being, fields of pattern that um, are influencing each other and, and on this fractal and fugal dance on the way from here to there. Um, so, um, so the feeling of having a choice is, is really just um, all of the different preceding patterns converging into the next pattern. Um, and it is determined, in my view. Um, and I think in a uh, shared traditional enlightenment tradition uh, view. Um, so when we ask, do the entities have will? Um, uh, it's not really clear what we're asking, you know. Uh, so um, to me, uh, you know, it's just pattern, I guess. So, uh, and the entities themselves, uh, just as we are, are just a temporary coherence of a particular pattern. Um, and uh, it comes together like a breath, and then it disperses again. And whether that coherence is a moment or 16,000 years um, is uh, not important, really. It's just, it's still a breath, which, whatever the time frame is. Um, and so that, that a particular being, you know, reveals itself to me or something, you know, you can make these stories, but it's better not to make the story, you know, just it's happening. Uh, you know, even the words I'm speaking, the, the words that I uh, shape after an experience to convey that experience, um, those two are determined. So it's just kind of, um, this interaction, this play, this dance of light, this play of pattern. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I think that we could ascribe will to them as much as we ascribe will to ourselves. But then I think that's a story that we can use in order to communicate with each other. But it, I think that we shouldn't uh, forget that the uh, apparent agency, the apparent existence of choice uh, is an illusion at the same time. So I would argue for maintaining both those perspectives at the same time. <laughs>